in the beginning, it was a little bit nervous because there's no two-seater, so the first time you ever fly it by yourself with an instructor chasing you a couple feet away. So in the beginning, you're thinking about every movement and, and not making a mistake, and about six months after you flying it, everything kind of becomes second nature, and, and you turn, and it's not a conscious thing. It's sort of an extension of yourself. And that's kind of the nice thing, is you're not fighting against the jet, it's sort of working with you. That is the sound, that's the first, that's the sound that the enemy hears too late. such a high pitch whine to these to these engines that if you work them every day like we go to an undisclosed location, we work sometimes 12 hours a day, you can see the crew chiefs versus the uh, regular technician around there getting tired. And the reason for that is sound fatigue. It's such a high pitch, I don't care if you have your earplugs or earmuffs, it penetrates that and it wears you down. The design of the A-10 was built around the gun, so a lot of people don't know that. They built the gun first, and the guy was, that guy's a genius, and he has to be nuts somewhere in the Bahamas, spending the money that he, he Fairchild's bought. But they designed the gun, and they built the airplane around the gun. So mostly I go to the range and we practice um, with Army guys or ground forward air controllers down there, they'll talk us onto targets and we'll do them and then uh, we fly low level training routes and stuff like that. It's mostly basic training. And then we also go to uh, Washington State and Arizona. We do live weapons drops, practice with the missiles and the bombs, stuff like that. Check one. Okay, sounds good. 